let's go to some baseball. <laughs> we, we, you know, we get excited when we get to talk to people involved in and around the games that they play, but then the people who also really make an impact on the community, we definitely enjoy telling their story. Uh, thrilled to be joined and bring on Major League umpire Phil Cuzzy. Phil, thanks for a few minutes. How are you doing today? Sure. How are you guys doing? Uh, we're, we're doing pretty good. Uh, you know, Jeff asked me a few weeks ago, he was telling me about the fundraiser that you were doing for, for ALS, and I want to get into it for a second, but I told Jeff, um, in college, uh, Lou Gehrig was a member of my fraternity, and so we did fundraising for ALS, and when I saw what we were doing, I was like, okay, th this is pretty cool. So I wanted to ask you, you've got the Roberto Longo ALS fund that, that you created can you tell us where it started from, why you created it, and how it's going? Yeah. Well, uh, you know, Roberto Longo is, is the, the hockey goalie. And, and sometimes when people try to go onto our site, uh, it, it comes up the hockey player, Roberto Longo, who was a, who was a great goalie, but um, another Italian. But uh, the Robert Longo was a um, – he, he was like a cousin to me because we, we really weren't blood cousins, but – his mother's sister married my mother's brother, and we were the same age. We grew up together. We went to junior high together, high school together, and uh, we played football together. And um, he was just one of those guys. Uh, he was a go-to guy, uh, graduated, wound up going to Harvard. I went to Glassboro State, closer down to you guys, and uh, he played football at Harvard. And then uh, once I got into the minor leagues, uh, you know, uh, Florida State, wherever I was, uh, Robert was the kind of a guy that he, he, he could pop in anywhere. And he was just very supportive of the, you know, the long, hard road that it is to to, uh, to get to the big leagues. And I remember one day I, I was uh, I was home for a, for a day off and we spoke on the phone and he said, you know, something's going on with me. My, my hand is uh, my hand is getting numb. And, and now I feel as though it's, it's going up my arm. And I said, you know, Rob, go to the doctor. And at the time, he didn't have insurance. And he said, well, well I don't know. It's just kind of numb. And long story short, he was diagnosed with, with uh, Lou Gehrig's disease, ALS. And, uh, you know, Robert, as I said, he was a Harvard grad. And he, uh, he was a very smart guy. And he started doing his own research. And then he called me and he said, um, I, I've just been given a death sentence. And that was really the first thing that, that he told me after, you know, he, he, he was diagnosed and um, and he knew what was going to happen. He knew he was going to lose his voice. He knew that he was going to lose all of his muscle movement. And it took about five years. You know, Robert was a he was a strapping all state linebacker for our town in Belleville, New Jersey. And as I said, he played at Harvard and he knew what was going to happen. And uh, and, and it did little by little. I remember he he was, uh, you know, he went with a limp, and then he fell, and then he was working with a cane, then a, then a walker, and then a wheelchair, and uh, you know, then it was a power wheelchair because he he couldn't wheel himself, and it, it was just, it was very, very, very terrible and heartbreaking to see what happened to my my captain and my and and the all state linebacker, you know, and. Uh, and then really, the last time I saw him, uh, he, he wound up moving to Florida. And at the time, he had a nine-year-old daughter. And the last thing I said to him was, Rob, I, you know, and, uh, education being so important to him, I said, Rob, I don't want you to have to worry about Dominique's education. I said, we will, I will get the community involved. I'll get the, the baseball community involved. And we will raise enough money to send her to whatever college she wants to go. And, you know, like, and he, and he blinked his eyes, you know, uh, because that's the last thing that, that an ALS patient has is the movement of their eyes. And, um, and fast forward, uh, we, we raised the money to send her. She, and she wanted to follow in her, fa her father's footsteps. And two years ago, she graduated uh, from Harvard. And she's going to start Harvard Law. Uh, I think it's next, uh, I don't know if it's next fall or next spring. So it's really been quite a road and we, we started you know he uh robert passed in 2004 on on saint patty's day and uh and that's that following january is when we started just a dinner just to raise money and um and that's what we did and and had no idea what it was going to grow into 
and just as I said, our community got involved. And the, the first year we had over 500 people came, and people said, uh, you know, uh, it's great people come the first time, but you know, you can't expect this, you know, the next year. And this is our 17th year, and we've had over 600 people every year, same 600 people from the community. And, you know, as I say, because of baseball, you know, I've had great mystery guests that have come. We've had Tori, Lasorda, La Russa, Jim Leland was just here last year, Lou Pinella, Bobby Richardson. You know, the list goes on and on. Joe Girardi, uh, Goose Gossage, uh, you know, we had Joe Piscopo, Larry Holmes, Bob Costas, it's just been, you know, it's just been unbelievable. And the money that we raise, you know, we have no employees. It's all, it's all uh, volunteer. So every, every dollar we bring in goes out and our, our money goes really three places, uh, research. Uh, we, we, we help, you know, programs with the ALS association out of Washington, the national, uh, uh, as well as Penn state Hershey, uh, they have a research program up there for ALS uh, we, and patient care, you know, whether it's whether it's a, a ramp or a, or a chair lift or, or anything like that. And then, again, keeping with Robert's theme of education, we give um, scholarships, you know, to, to kids or, or college funds. And uh, and that's it. And, you know, I, I get these phone calls from from, you know, people that we know and friends of friends. And they say, you know, my 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 brother's sister-in-law just get you know the first thing i say is how could we help them what is it that they need and uh you know people are reluctant to to ask for you know they think they're getting a handout they think they're getting charity but um, but that's why we raise the money and uh and i say please you know you may not know today what they're going to need but they're going to need something in the future and we'll be here to help you and, and, you know, Phil, we've talked to you before. We, we've talked to you in relation to, to some of the other work you do, even including the work with UM Cares. And, and for people that don't know, the Umpires Association on its own does, does uses its platform for good. And we, we talk all the time to, to athletes and coaches. And, and we've, try, we've tried to talk to people like you to, to show that, that umpires, too, are able to use their platform for positive change. And, and you've done it not just on your own, but you've also been able to get, you mentioned all the amazing people in, in baseball that have, that have contributed to what you're doing, the good work that you're doing. Uh, we'd be remiss considering uh, the news of today with, you've had Tommy Lasorda as one of those people. And we wanted to talk to you yeah. just for a minute about your own, your own recollection of, of the work that Tommy did with you and your, and just your reflections of, the, of this day and Tommy Lasorda in baseball. You know, Tommy was great because, um, he came to one of the earliest dinners that we had, and I don't know if it was it, it was either the second or the third. Our, our first guest was Bruce Fremming, the umpire Bruce Fremming. And then when Bruce heard that Tommy was coming, he said, I just want to make sure I bring in more people than, than Tommy Lasorda brings in. And then after Tommy Lasorda came, he said, I just want to, I hope I had more people than what Bruce Fremming brought in. So <laughs> it was kind of funny, but think about it. Uh, uh, Tommy flew across the country because, uh, you know, we, we hold this in Jersey, North Jersey, and uh, obviously he came from L.A., and he, he, was, he was just great. And it was, you know, we, we have, we have like, a, like a silent auction that, that runs for the, during the cocktail hour. And all of the great guests that I mentioned, you know, they come in and we do it as a mystery guest. And Tommy, at the, t- you know, at the time, he, he, people knew that he was coming. It was so early on that we wanted to try to promote it because we didn't know how many people were going to come. And when Tommy came in, he didn't want to sit like private, like in a private room or, and then wait until he was going to speak. He said, uh, I want to be with the people. And he walked around. It took us one hour to get Tommy from the library of this, uh, not even in the park, the restaurant that we, that we always use. And, uh, because he stopped and took pictures and shook hands and signed autographs for every person who asked him. So f- for a walk that should have taken him three minutes to get from one place into the main ballroom, the library into the main ballroom, it took him an hour, literally an hour to get in there because he stopped and, and spoke to everybody. And then of course, I'm sure you've heard him speak and he, I mean, he was funny. And, and the, the best part it was my crowd is mostly Italians and of course, that was right up his alley. And when I tell you that 
that this uh, restaurant, Nanitas in the Park, gives us name of food and it's there in, in a, a buffet for, for a, a king and queen, right? All Tommy wanted was a, was a dish of, uh, of, of meatballs and spaghetti. That's all he wanted. And when it came to dessert, he, uh, they had like a Venetian table, you name it, cannolis, and all, everything. He just wanted sherbet. That was all he wanted. But um, the crowd loved him. I mean, he, he's funny. He told great stories. And he, he was happy to just be a part of it, just to, uh, you know, to, to raise the money for, for a great cause. And he, he was all in. You moved this year, obviously, given all the circumstances, this year's fundraiser has gone virtual. So it's the 17th annual dinner to raise money for AOLS. Uh, Robert Longo, I'll get the name right so I don't actually screw it up. I always feel dumb when I do that. Uh, and this year, you've got some great guests coming, too. Can you tell us a little bit about the guests and how people can find out about it, get more information? Yeah, you know, again, virtual. So you think, well, look, how, how good could we do, you know, virtual? Who wants to sit in front of a computer? But um, but I, I think we're going to put on a great show. It's going to be Thursday, January 28th. And I, I tapped into people who have all helped us before. So Bob Costas is going to lead a roundtable discussion with uh, Joe Torrey, Bobby Valentine, and Bucky Dent. And... Um, that's going to just be one segment of the uh, of the of the evening, and then after well, that, well, hold, well, hold on to... a second. If you're having Bobby Valentine there, you're, how many segments are you going to have? How long is this going to go on? <laughs> well, it, it's going it, to it really. It's not. It's going to go on. I, I don't. I don't think for more than like an hour and a half. I, I think again, regardless of how interesting anything is people could only pay attention for so long, you know? So, uh, you know, maybe uh, Bob Costas will probably be like maybe a half hour with those guys talking, they're just talking baseball. And then, uh, and then we're going to have, um, now I know you guys are, are, are Philly down in Philly and, and you're not really Yankee fans, but I'm going to have the three sons of three of the greatest Yankees of all time. So we're going to have Randy Maris, David Mantle and Larry Berra. And they're going to be on having a discussion. We're going to be with uh, Steve Sharippa, who is uh, become, you know, he became a, a very good friend. And uh, Steve Sharippa from The Sopranos, as from well as Blue Bloods. Yeah. And uh, we will have uh, a discussion. And then that, that segment will be uh, live questions to, uh, you know, to those four. So I think it'll be entertaining. And it's it's the best alternative that I could have come up with, and I think we have some some big names, and it, it'll be it'll be a lot of fun. So if anyone who is listening, you know, the nice thing about it is we, we could have it's unlimited to how many people we could have, as opposed to when we're live, we're limited. We 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 hit 600, but we're tight in the room, so we we invite the fire department to make sure everything goes okay. But uh, but uh, for this. Uh, for people to go on to our website, which is Robert Luongo, L-U-O-N-G-O, A-L-S fund dot org. And that, that gives all the details about, uh, you know, making a donation to get the link for the, the, for the Zoom call, which will be on, as I said, January 28th. And uh, the, the response so far has been great. And we're still, you know, we still have a couple of weeks to go. So, so Phil, I would be remiss in asking you one of my favorite memories as a, as a Phillies fan is Cole Hamill's no hitter in 2015. And if I recall correctly, you were the home plate umpire for that in Chicago. Yes. And, yeah. and so the question that I have always had, I know that players have all these superstitions that they, they don't talk to the pitcher. There's all sorts of things they do when they get to the fifth, sixth inning and they realize that there's a potential no hitter or a perfect game. What is it like for a home plate umpire when, when you sit there and realize you've gotten to the sixth inning or so, or the seventh inning and there's a no hitter and you're the one calling the balls and strikes. Okay. I'm, I'm going to give you an answer and, and I, I hope that you believe me because it's the absolute truth. I did not know that Cole Hamels had a no hitter until the final out of the game. That and was my question to happened? Jeff. Did you know, like, what, do you even know what's going on there? I, I, I did not know. 
Now, I've been on the bases, you know, working the bases where I kind of look at the scoreboard or something in between the things, and I say, oh, we got goose eggs up there. There's, the, you know, this guy's throwing a no hitter. But, you know, whether he gets it or not, but but some, I've, I've been aware. But um, but with Cole, it, when the final out, if you remember, the final out was a circus catch out in left field. And when I saw that, and then all of a sudden I see everyone running, jumping, and, I, and, and I'm thinking, because, you know, that, that was, they were talking about uh, trade rumors with Cole Hamels, right? So I said, could, could it be to this, that, that his teammates are that happy that he, he just got traded? And that's the way of saying goodbye, good luck. <laughs> and then I said, and then like a second later, I said, you know what? I just worked a no-hitter. I looked up on the board. I saw all zeros, and I said, that was it. And I, and I didn't know, and I'm glad I didn't know. And, uh, you know, I, I worked, that was my, my second one. My first one was Bud Smith, if you remember, uh, with the Cardinals. Cardinals. And that one I knew in the top of the ninth inning. And, uh, it was, it was a nerve wracking, you know, ninth inning for me, but I, I was happy that I didn't know. Does it mean anything different to you when you're a part of history like that? Or is it another day at the office, you go and do your job? Well, yeah, you know, we, we do our job and, and, and that's why I'm glad that I didn't know because uh, you know that, that every, every, you know, like you know that wherever you are, the, 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 they're tuning into that game around the country and, and, you know, and you're saying, you know, all right, a little more pressure now because everybody's watching and you don't want to miss a pitch and, and cause anything to, to change the course of history. But, um, you know, it was uh, – it's just it's it's just different, you know. We're in a different world, umpires. So as as everyone else in the world is saying, uh, "Hey, Cole Hamels just threw a no hitter." We as umpires, you know, like I got phone calls from guys saying, "Hey, congratulations, you just worked a no hitter," and that's just kind of a different, you know. That's just that's just our world, you know. So uh, it's just it's just different. It's just very different for us. So so Phil. Uh, what's the plan for 2021 before we let you go? Do, do you guys have any, any knowledge of what's going to be happening with 2021 or, or are you in the dark at this point And it's still up in the air. Well, uh, you know, I think that, that although nothing is official, we are planning to, to go as we normally would. The, you know, the first difference is every January. So it would have been, I think uh, not, not next week, but the week after, we would have been in Phoenix for our annual meetings and our physicals. That was canceled. But, uh, you know, I, I've already received a call for, for a spring training schedule. You know, they just ask you your preferences, and so, so they don't have it. You know, we had heard rumors the same way that you guys probably have, that they were going to push the season back a month. And, you know, I, I thought, okay, you know, the, I guess the hope is that more people will be vaccinated and, and whatever. And I, and I know that they want to have fans in the stands, but we haven't heard anything else about it. And, and you know, again, so until we hear, I think everyone's planning to go as we normally would. But, of course, a lot depends on what happens in the next, you know, couple of months. Well, you just made Jeff's day even mentioning spring training. He gets the warm and fuzzies <laughs> when he even hears about spring baseball going on we uh can't thank you enough we always enjoy when you when you join us uh hope we get to have you back as the year progresses uh we wish you the best of luck with the fundraiser coming up and we'll make sure to put the information out on our social accounts and uh hope for continued great success it's a really great thing you're doing so thanks for the time well that'd be great i i appreciate talking to you guys and i appreciate you giving me the time to talk about the uh robert longo als fund thank you jeff thank you jason take care. have a great day